In concept, Starlink is such an unbelievable technology, but that is where it ends, in concept. While it is amazing to have broadband internet on the water in remote locations, there's a reason why this access has never existed historically. It is because it's very hard to have a stable connection when you're lurking with satellites. Sure, some degree of connectivity is far better than none. The key main issues with Starlink are as follows. You have large fluctuations in speed potential throughout the day, with the evening, being peak usage, often dropping down to sub 10 megabits per second speed, which is unusable for streaming. And of course, during these times as well, you have random outages that aren't even reported. And the biggest problem at all is extremely high latency, no matter when you're using, which goes against Starlink's statement that it is a low latency solution for gaming, streaming, and video conferencing. None of that would be possible if you're experiencing a high latency situation, especially gaming and video conferencing. Also, their claim about all weather reliability is less than accurate from real world use cases. Although on paper they are designed to handle these conditions, it does of course have a severe impact on internet speed, loss of signal, and of course latency like we keep coming back to. And one of the biggest issues with these is they are extremely unreliable in any weather event, even daily overcast and scattered clouds. I know many people have tried these out and they say even on hazy days, there can be complete loss of signal, overcast, complete loss of signal. And this is an extremely problematic issue as more extreme weather situations is where these are probably going to be most prevalent. If we can't survive in a residential area with a little bit of overcast, how is this gonna work in a snowy environment? or in a remote location with more severe weather going on. Another inherent issue, of course, like anything else, is that these things do not come cheap. If you get the standard hardware, it is $500 plus $120 a month for unlimited data. But if you're one of the users that wants to use this out on the open water, the price is going to skyrocket up to $2,500 for the base unit, and then as high as $5,000 a month depending on what data plan you want. Now granted, that $5,000 plan does not seem like it's from personal use, much more for commercial, like a cruise ship or something, but even the cheapest plan at 50 gigabytes, which you can easily go through if you're streaming, is $250 a month. So you'd likely have to do the one terabyte for $1,000 a month, which again, is just nuts money for any form of internet service plan. I understand that there are some advantages of being off the grid, but again, that is just such insane money and it's going to make it so that people just decide they'd rather not be on the grid at all when they are going off grid. I hope you all liked this video, and if you did, please do like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. I'll see ya.